Welcome to the Singapore Parenting Congress 2016. And uh, just by being here, I know that you want to make a difference in your children. Some, uh, children, I, I don't want to say kids because you guys are, are quite older, but I do see some children and, and kids here as well. And I know you're here probably with your mom or your dad. Um, and I, I'm glad you're here so that you can see firsthand for yourself how much your mommy and daddy love you and how you know they want to learn more about um, being a good parent to you, and I think that that's really nice. Um, the Singapore Parenting Congress is jointly organized by MediaCorp and Families for Life Council. And through this partnership, MediaCorp and Families for Life Council aim to provide a platform for parents and also for parenting experts to come together to share tips to make the future brighter for our children. This year, Singapore Parenting Congress 2016 focuses on how parents can be a superhero to our children. It's not about saving the world in this case, but it's more about how we can parent them in their everyday life and uh, at various milestones, big or small. And to me, it's all about you know, uh, making sure that our kids always look up to us like how they look up to superheroes, even when they get older and enter the teenage years, so to speak. Uh, Singapore Parenting Congress has benefited about 20,000 parents so far, equipping them with effective parenting skills for the past 10 years. Our speaker for this morning's session is Mr. Chong EJ. He's the manager of Touch Cyber Wellness, or TCW, a service of Touch Youth. Mr. Chong has uh, conducted over 350 cyber wellness workshops since 2007, reaching out to more than 25,000 students parents and educators in schools, corporations, and families. Uh, over the past 10 years, EJ has been driven with a passion to inspire parents and educators um, who struggle to cope with the rapidly advancing internet age. He works very closely with them to educate and to equip them with knowledge and skill sets to connect with their children and students. As you know, technology is advancing very rapidly. You know, we can't keep up. But our kids are better than us, you know, so let's find out what they're doing. So in a way, we can keep tabs on them in a subtle way, of course. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for our first speaker of today. His topic is give me five more minutes, please. Give it up for Mr. Chong EJ. Thank you, Jamie. Hi, everyone. Okay, let me just try this again on a Sunday morning. All right. Hi, everyone. All right. Love the enthusiasm. All right. If you're doing good this morning, all right, can you give me a thumbs up sign? Come on. All right. All right. Not just showing to me. Can you show it to somebody next to you or not? All right. So it's good to see you here this morning. All right. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you so much for taking the early morning to be here because I know that it is uh, really challenging because uh, uh, Sunday mornings you can be sleeping in and doing many other things, but you chose to be here. And I believe that this is really a topic that is uh, very concerning on all your hearts as well. All right. Uh, yesterday, I had the privilege of just uh, joining in the Mandarin session. All right, on a similar topic, and wow, the, the, the Q&A portion was really fast and furious, really very concerning topics ranging from preschool age to primary age to uh, secondary school, all the various uh, issues and, and, and concerns that are touching our hearts, all right? So, um, uh, so today's uh, session is going to be broken up into two parts. The first part will be sharing a lot uh, with all of you, and then please also stay back after the tea break for the second half because we're going to have an exciting uh, panel discussion. That's where you can toss up all your questions, all right? We are really here to learn uh, not just from me, but from each other uh, as well. All right, so we're ready, we're going to good to go. And uh, I, I love the title that has been framed up uh, for this morning's uh, session, particularly the first liner, right? If you have not noticed, I bet that is the liner that really drew you here, right? Uh, five more minutes, please. Okay, is there something you commonly face at home with your children? Uh, Five years, ago, five years ago, I thought it was just the PC and the laptops and the games. Uh, nowadays, it's the handphone, all right? Uh, whether it's your handphone or your children's own phone, all right? Five more minutes, please. Five more minutes, please. And uh, does it end with five minutes? All right, seems like a unanimous no. Uh. <laughs> okay, okay. So we all agree, you know, and sometimes we struggle and there's always this tension. So uh, today we're going to find out a little bit more, explore uh, what is this new world that kids are into? And then also... Um, 
what are some practical tips and uh, uh, good ways uh, to help, okay? So um, I'm going to start off with a bit of an uh, introduction just uh, to familiarize uh, myself, uh, uh, why am I involved in all this, all right? So um, I'm really privileged to be back uh, at Singapore Parenting Congress because two years ago I had the privilege to be here uh, to share with the parents on uh, uh, social media and some of the trends as well. So uh, for me to be back again, I, I truly find that it's, it's an honor uh, to be invited. And uh, this was one of the photos that we, we, we took uh, back in 2014. Uh. So I was telling my wife this morning, why in the world did I put this picture up here? Uh, because I, I think after two years, I must do some uh, commemorative uh, memento for myself. Uh, and also I'm going to do the same thing again. All right, <laughs> all right. So if you don't mind, uh, 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 play along with me a little bit, uh, you know. Uh, and uh, we're gonna take a selfie. All right, there's a selfie at a massive level here. Uh, all right. So uh, uh, when I do it, so everybody please uh, cooperate with me. And uh, so just smile. All right. I really are not, not, not. I don't bluff you, one. Uh, okay, really, it's happening. Uh, okay. Uh, so, all right. Okay. So this is what I'm gonna do. See, I'm gonna do that exactly the same pose. Uh, all right. This is amazing. All right. Uh, so I may, I may just even post it on my social media and uh, uh, say that you know. Uh, welcome to Parenting Congress. All right, okay. This is what we're going to do. Okay, on the count of three, yeah? One, two. Okay, okay, wait. Y'all must be a bit more lively, la. <laughs> you know, this one like only me taking selfie, yeah? Okay, on the count of three, we raise our hands, ah. Huh? All right, give a big wave, and that's where I'll take the photo, all right? Okay. One, two, three. All right, a few more. All right, okay. Give yourself a big round of applause, all right, for the participation. Okay. Thank you so much, all right. Um, well, uh, so that's me two years ago, and uh, one of the biggest difference, uh, uh, two years ago and uh, today, all right, and uh, it's uh, really a blessing on my heart, is uh, today I am like that, okay? Yeah, uh, two years ago I introduced myself as the most handsome guy in the family. Now there's another one that's more handsome than me. Yeah, the better version of me. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm 37 years old this year. Uh, as Jamie has mentioned in the introduction, I'm the manager at uh, Touch Cyber Wellness, uh, a service in Touch community itself that uh, specializes in uh, cyber wellness, media literacy. So we do public education, counseling uh, as well. Uh, I need to really put it a pointer there. No, I'm happily married. Yeah, really happily married, okay? And I'm very privileged today uh, to have my wife and my son who is also in this session today. They are happily seated behind. You see that cute, handsome boy? All right, woohoo! All right, okay. All right, he's uh, happily at uh, 10 and a half months old. Uh, so, uh, and trust me, at 10 and a half months old, I'm already very careful about screen time. Serious. He knows what is an apple. All right, because every time we always take the phone out, right? And then start taking pictures of him. All right, that's how the indoctrination begins from a very <laughs> young age. Yeah? Okay, so, uh, and I, I, one thing about me is uh, I graduated with a master's degree back about uh, 11, 10 years ago. A master's degree, and uh, listen carefully, a uh, master's degree in bioengineering. Yeah, bioengineering, okay. Uh, totally not related to social work, social service sector, and, and all that. Uh, but really, I, I did a... Uh, a, a jump, you know, purely because of a passion to work with families and uh, young children. All right, and of course, uh, many of you might be thinking, you know, hey, uh, EJ, wow, not very wasted, huh? You bioengineering, you know, then you come and do a social service. Do you? Is it like wasted in any way? Uh, never wasted because when I joined Touch Community, uh, that's how my life got touched, uh, uh, Because I got to know my wife at, at the workplace. All right, so my wife is a counselor. Okay, uh, so she does a lot of counselling, frontline counselling for the, uh, the, the young people or the families that need help. And, uh, you know, we always joke, I, I always make this joke, uh, you know, that uh, so by day she counsels the parents, uh, by night she counsels the husband. Uh. <laughs> no, the, the husband does need some wise counsel, you know, because uh, that's the better half, right? Okay, so uh, this is a little bit about uh, me. I'm very active on social media. Today we're going to talk a lot about social media as well, the handphones and all that. Uh, I'm very active. Uh, whatever you name it, whatever your children has, I probably also have. La, okay, uh, just really to explore their world, what they are really all into. And that is something I want to share with you today that you got to probably take that leap of... Uh, faith to jump, you know, and to try some of these things, all right? So, uh, let me start off today's session with a little uh, video to share with you, uh, and a very short clip, some of you might have seen it before, but let's watch it again, it's always a, a, a good laugh, all right? Ich 
Christ. All right, just a little teaser this morning as we start off, all right? You laugh because you can really relate to it, right? Uh, but really, I, I start off by showing this video because I want to encourage all of us here. Uh, first thing, really, I don't think we are that bad, lah, huh? I think we're way better than this. Uh, you, are, you are able to identify what is the difference between a tablet and a chopping board. Uh. Uh, but secondly, the truth is really this. Uh, the way we engage technologies of today is very, very different. I would dare to say, seated among us, all of us adults, parents, all right, and if you're a grandparent here also, all right, uh, really, we are probably the uh, adopters of technology. That's how I would usually frame it. But the children, all right, your children, uh, are really the engagers. Of technology they know the little nooks and the little corners you know uh, there's uh, blind spots everything that they know so they are very familiar uh, with some of these things so uh, this is the real truth all right and uh, so what is interesting nowadays is that this online world okay uh, has uh, really the internet has become the converged platform where we see read and do uh, everything else okay you think about it all right where do we get our latest news from today okay other than new newspaper it is really on social media. Okay? I was just doing a, a little, and I throw this as a reflection for all of you. Eh? Okay. Think very carefully and very hard. All right? What is the first thing you touch when you wake up and the last thing you touch before you sleep? Is it your phone? <laughs> okay, I see many of you nodding your heads. Eh? For various reasons. For some of us, it's the alarm clock. For some of us, it's the last Facebook post. Right? For some of us, it's the last WhatsApp messages that go out. All right? But you realize, you know, uh, and, and the phone is a very powerful device because the convergence now is not only just on the, 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 the computer, but it's also on uh, our smartphones uh, as well. So as we talk about, you know, this thing about screen time, okay, I can't help but just uh, relate back to what has, how has things developed uh, over time. And if you can identify with this next picture I'm going to show you, uh, uh, it roughly shows your age group. Uh, okay, but uh, the, all right, uh, uh, no harm, uh, all right, no offense in any way, okay. So, ah, uh, all right. So, uh, uh, the question is, uh, which generation do we belong to? Uh? Are you the 1G, 2G, 3G, or the 4G generation? Okay. Uh, I was just thinking this morning, maybe there's a no, no G. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, uh, how many of you, you have really seen the one G ones before? The, the, the Cantonese, they call it the Tai Ko Tai. Uh. Okay. Literally, when you throw the phone, somebody might get killed. Uh. Uh, really big. Okay. And some people think that it's a water bottle. Okay. Uh, but, you know, we are, we are moving in the times as this. All right. Uh, I, I grew up, you know, I'm from the 1979. All right. I grew up, I, I've seen it, the, the, this big phones, all right? It's totally not smart at all, okay? Uh, but um, I, I want to tell you this thing. If you look back and if you really think about it, when did this whole issue about, or this term uh, called smartphone addiction even, okay, if I loosely use the word smartphone addiction, uh, where did it really start to, you know, arise? Okay, I, I would guess it's probably around the 3G era, you know? Uh, especially when Apple iPhone was first launched. That totally revolutionized everything. Uh, so powerful. Every kind of workshop that we go to right now, the title all got the word I one. Huh? I eat, I post, I like, I share, whatever. You know, it's all the I, I, I. All right? Steve Jobs have done a wonderful thing. Huh? All right? So uh, as we look ahead to the future, all right, you never know. Maybe there's a 5G coming up, all right, possibly. Okay? Yesterday at a... Uh, my workshop, one of the parents was just reminding me, say, hey, EJ, do you know that uh, in the coming one or two years' time, I think the government is going to phase out the 2G already. All right. So it was a scary thought. I was just talking to my wife last night that, uh, hey, that means uh, the default phone is going to be a smartphone, no? and it's going to be made cheaper and readily available. Wow. How are we going to tackle some of these new waves and challenges that are going to come uh, along? So, how are our children really growing up today? All right? What are really their, their needs, um, their, their felt needs? Okay? And this is where I bring in a little bit of a research. Uh, all right? So part of me, I, I really like to look into some of this research. You know? uh, if you're a researcher kind of guy, you'll probably be quite familiar with this. Uh, uh, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. All right? If you're not familiar, it's, it's okay. I summarize for you. Uh, uh, basically, it means that every one of us, there are some needs that need to be met. You know, physiological, you know, sense of security and safety. And the highest level of this uh, hierarchy is self-actualization. And it is said according to experts that to reach that highest potential of self-actualization, 
Okay, the basic level must meet. So the bottom of the pyramid, all this must be neat. Feel safe, feel secure, you know, everything goes well in life. No, then I will, wow, you know, charge towards and achieving my greatest potential. All right, so this is us. Lah, huh? Okay, do you know for your children, uh, uh, for our young people that grows up today, uh, the, the, this, there's a revised version of this. Uh, for the 21st century, this is how it looks like. Huh? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, it's about Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is very important. Okay, I bet this morning when all of you come, all of you tapping on the Wi-Fi from Suntec City, right? Okay, or oh, asking what's the password? Or what's the password? Uh? Okay, or if you go touch down at the uh, airport of uh, another city, all right, the first thing you do is not wow, the scenery very nice. Switch on your Wi-Fi. Okay, what's the password from the airport? Okay, and uh, more importantly, is the battery life. You can have all the Wi-Fi in the world, but no battery pack. Okay, just. I suspect many of you here in your bag and your handbag, you carry a portable charger, a power bank. Huh? And the power bank is quite high level one. The 5,000 one, not enough. Must be maybe even six digit one, 100,000 or something like that. Okay, uh, That's how things have changed. All right. Okay. So our bags have gotten heavier, not because of anything else, huh, but because of the power banks. All right. So, um, okay. so our children today, I think this is the real truth. Really, and uh, this is really a picture that uh, uh, really happened to me even the first few days when my baby came out, all right? The exposure, all right? They are the digital natives, all right? They, they, the first few things that they see is probably also our handphones, uh, taking pictures uh, of them. So this is the new norm of today, if by now you have not noticed. Everything is online, okay? information at our fingertips, all right, uh, and like, even games have evolved, um, and posting online, updates, you know, the playground, the traditional playground has also changed, okay, no longer just the, uh, you know, what you see there, you know, the real playground, but the playground is online uh, right now. Just very something very interesting this morning uh, happened, you know, we had, we're having some technical difficulties this morning, you know, very early when we came, you know, and we didn't know how to solve it, and uh, guess where we had to look for information? <laughs> Google, uh. Okay, uh, and if you do not know by now as well, uh, YouTube is also a very helpful, helpful tool sometimes to find information, right? All the life hacks, all the how-to, okay? How to bundle your hair, how to cook a po poached egg or whatever, whatever, every single thing else. But of course, there are challenges. If you don't search properly, you might stumble across some uh, challenging uh, things uh, as well, okay? So, um, there was a, a, a survey that was done in uh, 2014 all right, by uh, our governing ministry, all right, uh, MDA, uh, for this window age group of 0 to 14. Right? Okay? 0 to 14. Okay? Uh, anyway, just before I show the results, I just do a little demographic survey. Uh. How many of you, you have children from the uh, uh, kindergarten age and below? Raise your hands. Kindergarten age and below. All right, quite a handful. Uh, primary, lower primary, lower primary, sorry, lower primary, okay, upper primary, four, five, six, lower secondary, one and twos, and then uh, upper secondary, three, four, fives, any in the poly, JC, tertiary institutions, okay, a small number, huh? all right, so majority seems to be in the primary uh, age group, all right, so you should watch out for what, what is being shown in this survey here. All right. So there was a question asked, went online for media and non-media activities? 77% right. said yes. Okay. And we did a further breakdown. In that 77%, uh, how, what was the age range? Okay. It was quite an even split, surprisingly. Almost a 33 average kind of percentage for each range. 0 to 6, 7 to 10, 11 to 14. Pause a moment and look at that pie chart there, the second pie chart. 0 to 6? 33%? Alright. What are the 0 to 6s doing online? Alright. What, what are they doing online? Actually, I would like to ask. Uh. Uh, YouTube, watch video, the bunnies, the and whatever else, lah, huh? Sesame Street and all that. Nah. All right. Yeah, it's very true. All right. You go food court, you can see a lot of these things happening. You will see prams being attached with uh, those uh, 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 you know, holder especially for the iPad one, right? So that the child can watch the videos and, and all those. Uh, that is the exposure. So I would like to say and suspect that for this group, uh, 0 to 6, uh, the exposure is by who? Parents, okay? I'm not saying now, uh, just a disclaimer, I'm not saying that it's, it's wrong, all right? 
Okay, but I think there is a place for balance. Okay, so hear me out. Uh, so it's, it's really getting younger, uh, this age group. All right, and what are they doing? You know, so they're going online, but what kind of activities uh, are they on? All right, uh, this graph uh, is also from the same um, uh, report, you know, but when I put it up, you know, I'm really trying to test your eyesight. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but just kidding. All right, I'll just zoom in on the top three. Yeah. All right, uh, online usage, uh, their devices that they are using, okay, smartphones, tablets, PCs, and laptops. The yellow is the summary overall. Uh, this uh, pink color is the zero to six one. All right, so look at the pink color one first, the bright pink color. Okay, most of these uh, age zero to six. The, the, the online usages are the, the platform, the device that they're using is actually the tablets. All right? And not surprisingly for the older children, of course, is the smartphone. A general trend you will see is that PCs and laptops are going down. Okay? And that's pretty much expected. Okay? Uh, because all of us own devices like tablets, smartphone. Think about it. I toss you another reflection question. Uh, okay? uh, calculate the number of smart devices you have in your home. Do a mental calculation. Uh. Okay. Smart devices. Okay, you can even don't count your PC that you know that big machine, you know. It's okay. You know, just maybe the laptop, all right, the tablets and the smartphone. Okay. You calculate that number, okay? And now you think of another number. How many people you have in your house? How many human beings you have in your house? All right. Does the num is the number bigger than the number of humans in your house? The most definitely. Uh, some of us have two headphones, you know, uh, and all that. You know, so this is the situation. The penetration rate, the digital technology penetration rate is very, very uh, high because of personal, because of work-wise, all right? We are using a lot of it. So the question to really talk about today is this, uh, as a starter, uh, all right? As an appetizer now, uh, all right? So uh, with so many devices, uh, and at such a young age, they are going in. Uh. So what is this playground that they're into? You know, EJ, you tell us about the, the new playground. So what is this playground? All right. And uh, so I'm going to flash you a slide. And uh, you can also see in your handouts, you know, in your goodie bag, there's this wonderful handouts that we've done up. You know, uh, If you have a pen with you, you can even start circling. Uh, you know. uh, I'm going to show you. Okay. Look at, you can look at the screen, you can look at your handouts. All these uh, playgrounds that our children are into, the kind of platforms that they are in. Okay, if you have a pen with you, it will be interesting. You know, you can start circling uh, on your handouts. Uh, which one, which one, you know? Okay, if you don't have a pen, you can look at the screen and start pointing, lah. Okay, uh, this one I know. This one I know. Okay, uh, the children can also participate. You know, yeah. Then you will really look your make your parents look bad, like you know, like hundred percent, but they know zero. But no, <laughs> okay, no worries. <laughs> right. Um, if seated here, your children are secondary school age group, uh, they would know roughly 90% already. Okay. Primary school, maybe I give it about 70, 75%, you know, yeah. So if you want to be an effective parent in the digital age, uh, at least in terms of awareness first, uh, uh, you have to pass this test here, you know. Yeah, this is like a little pop quiz right now. So your passing mark is you must have at least 70%. Uh. Yeah, don't worry, if you cannot pass later, we have remedial lessons for you. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, yeah. Okay, so I, I'm sure there are some, I purposely put in some familiar ones to help you pass, uh, you know, like Facebook, WhatsApp, and all those things. Uh. Uh, primary school kids, from what I understand, they love to play some of these games, like what? Uh, on the, on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, Agario, uh, Roblox, okay? Uh, very cute Lego-like kind of game. And then you have Minecraft, all right, the HO favorite kind of thing. Uh, I, for one, am totally... Uh, clueless about what's this agario game that is so nice you know it's about all the small circle eating other circles becoming a bigger circle and then the circle gets bigger and bigger and bigger bigger and then they multiply all right uh, and they split you know and yeah i tried playing and i gave up after two minutes you know yeah uh, because i always get eaten uh. <laughs> yeah all right and then uh, of course uh, if uh, especially for the teenagers uh, they will love this on the bottom left corner spotify you know why spotify okay i don't know huh? Okay, uh, some of you know, like, online, it's like a bit of uh, a simplified version, it's like online radio. Okay, and you pay a premium, you can download the songs and all those things. Uh. Uh, all right, and then, um, uh, of course, uh, the top, middle top, there's this cute little ghostly-like little figure. All right, you know? 
Ah, you all know, ah, okay, ah, it's called Snapchat. Ah. Hey, very good. Ah. That means there's an improvement from two years ago. Yeah, two years ago, when I still show Snapchat, everybody very quiet. Ah, so we can report to ministry that got improvement. Ah. Okay, awareness level went up. Ah. All right. Snapchat, all right. Secondary school kids and above all love to use uh, Snapchat because other than chatting, there's this special function called the auto-disintegrating function. Whatever sent across gets disintegrated Im almost immediately or you can choose a timeline. Ah. And uh, if I may draw your attention to just two other applications that are pop popularized uh, today, uh, one is a messaging app, which is this paper aeroplane thing, besides Snapchat. Telegram, okay? Uh, this paper aeroplane thing, all right, paper aeroplane, all right, next to Snapchat. Nah. Uh, it is like a combination of all the uh, WhatsApp, Snapchat, WeChat, Line Chat, and all these things because you can send very cute emoticons uh, and you can have secret chat groups, you know, uh, and of course the usual pictures and, and all that. So uh, nowadays has quite a high take up rate. And the other one to take note is this one KIK. Kick. All right, KIK. Beside the stomp uh, icon. All right, anybody here knows what is kick? Okay, it's relatively new. Uh, at least in Singapore. Uh, in US, it has been pretty popularized. And uh, I'm always very observant of uh, US and UK trends because whatever happens there, you give it another three to five years, it likely is going to flow down uh, to, 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 to Singapore because uh, we're quite open to some of these concepts uh, and all that. Uh, so KIK is a messaging app, but listen carefully. It is an anonymous messaging app. Okay? Nowadays, all the messaging apps that we have I need to have your phone number, right? I need to have your phone number, I add you in my contact list. We are friends, we talk. This one, don't need your phone number. Okay? You just need to have your user ID. Okay, your nickname. It's like your online chat, your nickname. I search for you, I find you. Or we can even just switch on the GPS function and I just locate. In this function room of about 100 people, how many are using Kick? It will locate. And then, eh, there are about 5 people, 10 people. I can start randomly messaging, talking, uh, to them, or I can blast out a big message and everybody receive it. All right, so you won't even know who is behind that account. What is the real identity? Previously, the real identity is tracked by the phone number. Now it is pretty. It's getting harder uh, to track. So just be on the watch, on the lookout for some of these uh, new trends that are coming, specifically maybe in the area of uh, anonymous uh, messaging uh, apps itself. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so your pass are uh, pass or not? I, think, I, I hope so. Lah. Okay. I have a bit more confidence in parents of today. All right. At least got 70%. Ah. Okay. Uh, don't worry, the rest you do not know. Ah. Uh, that's why you see got handouts, right? So that when you go home, you can talk to your children about it. You know, hey, what is this I learned today? Are you, do you use this? Do your friends talk about it? Start a conversation with your children. Okay, now this is where the fun part comes. Ah. Uh, other than the playground, okay, when you go to the playground to find your children, uh, you must know how to talk to them. Uh, because... They are, you are talking English, they are talking uh, internet slangs. Ah, so it's very important. Okay? We must speak a common lingo, reaching out to them, you know, to, so that we effectively reach out to them. Huh? Okay, so this is where the fun part comes. We're going to do a little test again. All right, just now was level one. Uh, this is level two. Huh? Okay, let's start from the top left corner. Anybody knows what is FLFC? I assure you it has nothing to do with any football club. Any, any wild guesses? Wild guesses? I see some really young people here. All right. They're probably here for their PW. All right. Okay. <laughs> Project work. <laughs> okay. Any guesses? It's related to maybe Instagram, a little bit more Instagram. Okay, okay. I, I help you. Huh? Okay. First answer. First like, first comment. I show already, then you're all, huh? <laughs> okay, you've probably seen it somewhere before, okay? Uh, so nowadays, it's not only uh, good or important to just upload a photo on Instagram, but we're all fighting to be the first to like your that photo, comment on their photo, all right? Uh, that's why teenagers, when they upload a photo, right? Upload already, still cannot eat the dinner, no? Still constantly checking who is the FLFC, okay? Uh, so, so maybe if your children got Instagram, uh, uh, you might want to be the FLFC, lah. Okay, and after you put the FL, you type FLFC, ah, then you want to find the emoji that has the raised hand one. Ah, that will look a bit more cooler. Ah, 
huh? Okay, uh, how to be cool parents. Uh, okay, and please, please, I plead of you, do not type out the entire thing. First like, first comment. <laughs> Confirm, your kids will know you went for a Sunday morning Singapore Parenting Congress workshop. Okay, and then you come back, try to show off, uh, act cool. Uh, all right. <laughs> so straight away, use that lingo. All right, the second one, L-Y-S-M. All right, okay. All right, love you so much. All right, some of you know. Huh? Very important, tell your children, tell your spouses. All right, uh, okay. Uh, the third one, I-D-E-K. Hey, you're very good. Huh? Wow. Okay. All right. Play cheat, huh? searching on the Google now, right? <laughs> no worries. This is technology helps us. Huh? Okay, I don't even know. All right, uh, previously it was I-D-K. I don't know, I don't know, I don't even know. Okay, B A E. Fourth one. Okay, it, it, uh, nothing to do with any Korean star, <laughs> Bae Yong Jun or whatever. Okay, no, not related, not related. Huh? Okay, something about relationship, man. I know. Huh? Yes, I hear I somebody say something. Ah, correct. Okay, right. before anyone else. Alright. Need not be restricted to boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, but it means that, you know, you know, like our relationship are very dear to each other. It's an like endearment term, you know. Hey, you're my babe. You know, like, so before, it's like very important, you know, before anyone else. Yeah, you know. So you can uh, try to use, like, some of the lingos together, you know. Wow, I L-Y-S-M-U, you are my babe. Uh, well, quite good, uh, you know. It's like tweet-worthy kind of thing, uh, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, Okay, so if you say you LYSM somebody, you know, you are their bae, so naturally you must have a lot of HT, HT with the person. Ah, you must have a lot of heart to heart talk with your children, okay? Uh, parents is a very important reminder because in this digital age, uh, a lot of things are vying for attention, okay? The phone is vying for attention, our bosses are vying for attention, you know, but your children need your attention. Spend time talking to them, all right? Hearing them out, okay? And I, if I may add it on, don't just you do the talking. Let your child do the talking. Let them share how has their day been. Okay. And uh, the last one, you okay, so you must know. Uh, okay. This one, don't know uh, immediate failure already. Okay. Uh, o O T D. Oh, okay, very good. Okay. Uh, no, no immediate failure here. Huh? All right. Outfit of the day. Okay. Yeah, what you wear today, you know. I take a photo later. You can you can take a selfie later, send to your teenage children, all right, and tell them uh, this is mommy and daddy's uh, O O T D. Uh, uh, what is yours? Uh? All right, maybe they are still sleeping, so they are pajamas okay, for them. All right, so now, you see, it's very important. Um, and uh, I, I always say this, when we want to engage and help our children or work with our children, we can parachute in and start blazing our guns and say that, you know, okay, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. And it's very common. Sometimes because we do not know what is happening, we just jump in uh, with a very traditional method. But engaging children of today sometimes is a bit different. You need to build bridges to go in, all right? Go to common grounds and to connect uh, with them, all right? This is very important, okay? Connecting, building that relationship with them, going to that common ground. And some of these are common grounds, okay? Uh, so uh, two years ago when I did the parenting uh, congress, you know, uh, something interesting happened. I, I also shared something similar but different kind of uh, uh, lingos uh, because it has changed since then, you know? And a parent during the session actually texted the daughter, you know? She was having quite an estranged relationship with the, with the daughter, like very tense kind of thing. Uh, so immediately she texts her daughter, say, uh, good morning, you know. Uh, she just randomly texts, like, what is your OOTD? And then the daughter actually replied, you know. Say that later what she's going to wear, and she was quite surprised how she knew it. And then the conversation just got started, okay. And, and that's sometimes, sometimes it's just finding that common thing to talk about, okay, like a Kickstarter uh, kind of thing. So I want to encourage you, all right, uh, try using some of this. But of course, please make sure during their English composition and all that, they don't use some of these. Huh? All right, not allowed. Huh? All right, even though Singlish is allowed right now, but uh, not this. Okay. Uh, so what else are they doing online? A new trend that is happening. Watching online videos called Let's Play, Unboxing, uh, something very, uh, very popular YouTube channel, all right, uh, PewDiePie. All right. Um, you know, in the journey of counseling and doing consultation, me and my wife, we always encountered this, you know. Uh, we talk to young people, we say, that, okay, play Minecraft, you play too much already, right? You need to cut down the hours. Or if serious cases, we say, cannot play anymore, you know, have to just cut off for a season. Uh. And then the child will be like, you know, oh, it's okay, you know, Mr. Chong, it's okay. Um, you don't let me play Minecraft, it's fine. 
because I can go to YouTube and watch people play Minecraft. Wow, it's not just about the playing anymore. No? Uh, literally, they are just happy sitting there and being engaged by the video, watching the celebrities play. And some of these videos that they are consuming can be, it's not just all plain smooth sailing, but uh, some has uh, very intense like vulgarities and, and all that, okay? Uh, there are some dangers. Unboxing is uh, more like uh, when you have something new, they actually film a video of them unboxing the item. Maybe a new Lego set, maybe a device and all that. And so some people just like to uh, watch it, okay, and see how things uh, evolve. And the, the, the key thing is usually because they don't have such a thing. And if they cannot own it, they will be happy watching people opening it and, and showing it uh, to them. Or maybe they are considering buying it. You know, it's just like us, before you buy an iPhone or whatever phones, you, know, you want to find out the specification, you, you can watch some of these videos uh, as well. So, that was just a little bit of a, like an appetizer, you know. And uh, I think this is where I want to jump into to this, you know, that um, really there are a lot of concerns uh, with all this exposure, all right? Uh, in general, we call it entertainment uh, media, all right? And the issues and the concerns does have a certain impact and influence on our children, all right? So I'm going to breeze you through some of these things, some of these concerns, all right? So, but, uh, but before that, you know, let me just frame it for you. What really is media, huh? all right? Uh, you probably know this, all right? The more traditional definition, media, we are exposed to media, text, images, and so that they transmit a message, all right? They give us information, they entertain us, all right? And these are all the platforms that inf the, all this media uh, can reach out to us, TV, social media, blah, 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 so forth and so on, okay? Uh, but the challenge is, do we even know how much, how does media make money? Or how does it influence our children? Okay. Beyond just the traditional media of television, prints, but nowadays with all these online videos, with all the games that they are exposed to. Right? And do we even know that there is actually age restriction, you know? Okay, do you know there's age restriction even for WhatsApp? Hmm. Okay, do you know what is the age restriction for YouTube? Okay. Or even all those uh, Twitter, Instagrams and all that, right? Um uh, we managed to find this from uh, this very special agency, all right? Uh, this little picture to show you. All right, I'll show you one half first, huh? Okay, I think the one half enough to rock you off the, 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 the boat, huh? Okay. Don't worry about the apps that you're not familiar with because this is quite US-based, all right? So uh, Singapore might not use a lot of all these apps, but take a look at the extreme uh, right-hand side. YouTube. 18, no? 13 with parents' permission. Okay, that's the legal aspect. Huh? Okay, and of course you have all your WeChat and your Kick and all that. It's actually 18, you know, surprisingly. So technically, technically, yeah, all right, I don't, don't need to feel guilty or anything, but technically when we say allowing our children to say, okay, go ahead, have your own account and just going to do it. Actually, we are sort of like breaching uh, what is the legal aspects uh, of it. And the other aspect, wow, look at the extreme left. Okay, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the rest, Snapchat even, the age restriction, all right, you need to be at least 13 years old. And in the middle, WhatsApp, 16. <laughs> 16 is how, uh, which level of education? Sec 4. You think our children can wait until Sec 4 that to use WhatsApp? <laughs> All right, so I, 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 you know, this is uh, the latest we have found data 2014. I suspect that they're going to make further changes and adjustment to that. But again, having said that, do you know what is the reason why there's such age restriction? Do you think it's to protect us or protect the organization? The, the, the company, in that sense. Most of the time, all these are to protect because most often, if you agree that you are, you're, not above, you're not, you're below 16, but you agree, uh, it means that you know, the, it's not up to us. Anything happen is not, it's not on, the owner is not on us, okay? But just to let you know, show you this slide, that there are actually certain age restrictions. So there is a case to make, even when your children from a very young age keep harassing you for social media accounts, just purely on the legal aspect, you can tell them you can't, okay? Or if you have it, maybe there's a, another way you might want to work around it, okay? Using your account, restricted viewings, or whatever, all right? We can discuss more during the Q&As uh, and all that. Right, so, some of these key concerns all right, that I want to share with you uh, includes this. All right, number one is uh, what they call social media sharing uh, context collapse. Okay, don't worry about this big, heavy term called context collapse. Huh? All right, basically, in summary, it means that the infinite audience that you can reach out to. Okay, 
um, just a, a, a few days ago, I posted some posts on social media, my Facebook, wow, some picture. Wow, I know 300 likes. Lah. Wow, two, I mean, to me, when I get 10 likes, I'm quite happy already. When I get 300, I'm like, wow, to me, it's infinite audience. Huh? Okay. Uh, but, you know, you just imagine, whenever we post something, it's really an infinite audience watching it. But nowadays, as a technology advances, okay, people are also quite cautious about sharing personal information, okay, which is a good thing. It shows that all our workshops and those is, uh, education is, is doing really well. So even the news article says this, Facebook faces decline in users posting personal content. So with that in mind, all these uh, companies, all right, they are also advancing their technology development. So do you know what is the latest thing that Facebook have come up with? To make you review your personal information? Okay, Facebook Live, somebody mentioned. Facebook Live. Okay, it's like a live feed that is happening. Okay, and that has caused some very scary news that have come forth uh, in the media. You've read about, you know, there, there were Facebook live videos of people who, who, who committed suicide and all those things. Okay, um, so some extremist uh, uh, behaviors. All right, just but it's not all this development is to force us, you know, to try it and then in the midst of it, give out personal information or more personal information. Now, when it comes to all these privacy things, a lot of times your children may not be too aware because they're always very quick to just agree, okay, go, okay, let's start playing already. What's the thing on Snapchat? What's the thing on Facebook, Instagram? You know, uh, All these terms and conditions is just a, a tick button to them. So I feel that it's important. If your children are already on it, it's a good opportunity to have a conversation to tell them, hey, when you click on the terms and conditions, you've got to read or not. Actually, guiltily, uh, some of us just don't read. Uh. <laughs> But it's good to read, you know. Uh, it's important to read even. Uh, I, I read this article just a couple of days ago, fresh off the oven, all right, from this uh, website called Mashable. Seven things you didn't know you agreed to in the terms of service. I'm not going to flash seven. I think I flashed the first one. It's good enough for everybody. Okay? The first one, Facebook owns everything you post. Okay? And it's written down there. The terms and condition. You grant us non-exclusive, transferable, sub-licensable, royalty-free, worldwide, blah, 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 everything to any IP content that you choose to post on or in connection with Facebook. Okay? Basically, the bottom line is they can use your materials, anything like for, for promos and all that. Nothing is safe nowadays. Wow. I was quite shocked. Okay? Uh, and I think there, there is a place to tell your children about this. Okay? While we share photographs of like you know, family events and all those things. Maybe there are some really personal information you shouldn't be sharing. I've seen people posting up photographs of IC, air ticket, where they go, every single thing. Uh, uh, okay, uh, this, this is a privacy compromisation. Uh, okay? And uh, you might be thinking, hey, but EJ, my child uh, don't use Facebook already. Facebook uh, is for dinosaurs. Uh. Uh, Facebook is for dinosaurs like my parents who use. Uh. We already moved from Facebook already. We use Snapchat. Look at what Snapchat says. Snapchat terms and condition, terms of service. In addition to the rights you grant us in connection with other services, you also grant us a perpetual license to create derivative works from, promote, exhibit, broadcast, syndicate, publicly perform and publicly display content submitted to live, local, any crowdsource service, and that's from blah, blah, blah. Basically, again, it's the same thing. Anything you post up, you give them so-called the, the rights. Uh, to use some of these things. Hey, but EJ, didn't we just say that Snapchat, I upload only, after 5 seconds, 10 seconds, it is auto-disintegrate, gone. Are you sure? Alright. Some of you, you are in the IT business, you will know. There's no such thing as disintegration on the internet. It is still kept somewhere, still in the servers and for a while, for a certain period of time before it's overwritten uh, or taken away. Right, so privacy is a big issue. So I, I feel that really we must educate our young people on this. Whenever they try to upload something, they can even tell you, but it's free. I participate in this survey. Uh, it's free. You know, uh, I can use their services or I get uh, some rewards from it. All right? There is no free meal in this world, online especially. We have this thing called the value proposition. The great stuff you get from the internet for free. It's a perceived free. Uh, isn't free at all. It's an exchange where they'll take your data in exchange for a free digital service. Have you ever seen those uh, um, things like uh, you participate in this and uh, you put your picture up 
they will do a scanning and say, ah, you, your facial expression looks like you are age 40 years old. Something kind of thing. You know, but basically, you say you give away your photo. Then they do all this fun fun, you know. Or they say, you know, oh, you participate this, uh, in this uh, very simple survey. We will tell you which character you look most alike in Harry Potter. You know, something like that. Okay, it's just for fun. But in the midst of fun, you're actually compromising personal data. Right? So it's something to be watchful of. Free service, but at a compromise of privacy. Okay, and uh, other concerns, all right, uh, this is a little bit more for the secondary school and above, you know, tertiary kind of age group, um, um, uh, demographics kind of students. Uh, last year, tail end of last year, we actually, uh, Touch actually released a survey results that showed that more secondary school students are involved in sexting. Okay, sexting means the uh, sending of inappropriate pictures, uh, personal photos, you know. Um, um, so actually this question, we, we poll it among the students, uh, 1,500 upper secondary students. Within the past one year, have you been involved in sexting? Only 4%. But I want to highlight to you, do not belittle this uh, 4%. It's a, it, it can grow bigger if you're not careful. Okay? Like I said, this trend is very prevalent in US, but uh, in Singapore, not that big yet. But I thought the big thing that shocked me was this. Are you aware of the potential implications, negative implications of sexting? 88% actually say yes. So they know it is wrong, they know of the dangers, but they still choose to do it. Some sounds like a familiar trend among young people. Uh. They know that it is wrong. They know playing too much computer game is wrong, you know, but they still continue to play. You know, why? Uh? What is going through their mind? Right? Later, I'll use one slide to, to explain to you. Right? But I just cover some of the key concerns first. And of course, the big thing about pornography, okay, uh, we recently launched this... Uh, a survey result and it went very big on the straits time all right i can tell you honestly never in my life have had so many big shots calling me uh, all right big shots from the different ministry all call me all very shocked by the frontline newspaper wow nine in ten teen boys exposed to pornography wow you know ej can you tell us the results here with us the report and all that then i went online to social media to see what people say uh, and they say yeah totally correct nine out of ten exposed to pornography the last one was lying <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Yeah, there's yeah, some truth to that, all right, okay. Uh, okay, but what, what I want to highlight was this, you know, uh, from this, uh, there are many things that we, were, we caught up in this uh, report, but one of the things that really caught my attention is the exposure via personal mobile devices. 88% for the boys, 73% for the girls. In fact, you look at computers and laptops, the numbers are much lower, okay. And the age of exposure, a lot of them for the boys came at upper primary, a lot of the girls came at maybe lower secondary. Okay? So think about it, parents. When we allow our children the device to use, do we consider putting in some filtering measures or push time restrictions or whatever? Are you around to supervise? Or is it most of the time just a nah? Okay? Keep quiet for the next two hours. And they will really keep quiet for the next two hours. Okay? But they are swimming in challenging waters okay, for the exposure because the exposure will affect the mind and the thinking as well. And of course, uh, coupled with uh, this, a lot of things are not full-blown pornography, but uh, we have all this uh, media, you know, sensationalization, you know, on television that they are watching, prime-time television or pay-to-view television programs, okay, uh, that, that really uh, sensationalize things like sex, you know, stereotype gore, horror, adult themes and all that. Uh, and it's a it's a big question that we always ask. How do we protect the young? On one hand, we can always cry out to say, hey, government ministry, can you block? Can you block everything? You know, just uh, put one big layer of covering, block every single thing. But that's also not the way to go. You know, and so a lot falls back to parental, uh, parent-child interaction and education uh, as well. Um, so some good resources. Uh, we, 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 we slow down here a little bit just to highlight to you that there are some good resources that you can check all right, uh, you can, uh, this is the usual, you know, like movies, you know, um, TV shows, they will actually show a, a rating, okay, um, and so you need to know this rating, uh, G, PG, PG-13, NC-16, M-18, R-21 as well, and if you are still not clear, there is always a website you can refer to, all right, our governing ministry, MDA, has this website, you can actually go and search for the classifications, now look at the screen, uh, it's not just classification for films and videos, huh? It is also classification for video games. Before you buy a video game, right, 
your child may pester you on the spot. Hey, we walk past the game shop. Bye, 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 bye. What pressure. Actually, you can do a quick search. All right. What rating is this game? I have far too many examples of parents who bought the game only to regret that Aiyah, it was an M18 game. Then after when they come for sessions and counselling, they tell me, wow, my child very violent, this and that, you know, because uh, you know, exposed to all this kind of game. But the exposure actually came because parents didn't check the rating and just bought it. All, right? all it takes is five minutes, do a quick check if you're not certain. Right? And there are many good other websites uh, that, that uh, show some of these information as well. And uh, one of the last few things, of course, is uh, sexy media, all, right? all these uh, music, liberal arts, and all these things. Uh, I think right now, it's, uh, all this MTV that they've been showing up. Basically, the bottom I want to tell you is sex sells. Capturing eyeballs and attention is always through all these things. Okay, all the sexual innuendos, all, right? all these uh, twerking, dancing, and whatever. Um, it started out with cute, but then the cute became uh, a bit like oversex. Okay, so more bizarre, more sexy. The purpose is to stand out for eyeballs, for the the viewership, the hits. Okay, uh, and many of our children are drawn uh, to it. Of course, games. All right, is another thing. Right, all this manipulation, violent video games. All right, the psychological manipulation to keep you to keep the gamer playing. So. Um, there has been a lot of efforts put into game designing. Okay? I, I once heard from a friend who works in a game designing company uh, that they employ psychologists on their team to better understand the psychic of the gamer and they develop strategies to get the gamer hooked or drawn back because that's how they, I mean for them it's a profit making business. Right? So, uh, so they'll induce gambling like behavior. Right? Uh, they analyze how people get drawn, attracted to gambling. They try to induce this into uh, 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 the gaming features. All right? They cause emotional attachment, the fear of losing out, desensitization, uh, and, and, and to violence. All right? uh, so they play, so violence get very normalized. All this bang, 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 shooting, all the blah, all the gore, normal. Uh, you know? uh, that's how they desensitize our children. Um, so gaming is not just fun alone. Okay? But it is also, fury, you know, they call it the three Fs, uh, fun, fury. All right, fury is when you get into the, the zone, uh, wow, very intense, you know. Imagine when you're playing so intensely at that moment, uh, suddenly uh, the mother or the father comes in and stop playing. Switch off the Wi-Fi, pull the LAN cable. Well, then the real fury will come out already. <laughs> okay. uh, and of course, the last one is frustration. That's a very high level of gaming design, you know, where you frustrate the gamer enough for them to try again. Okay, not too much, because too much they'll give up, but enough for them to come back and replay and retry. All right, get ready for this. Uh. <laughs> okay, uh, Singapore is, is, is holding it back, all right? At least uh, the latest news from the government ministry is that they are blocking it. Uh. But if you have seen worldwide phenomenon, uh, uh, everything is, every, almost every country is happening. Asia, I think Japan just launched it. Uh, uh, Hong Kong, I think so, right? Uh, okay, yeah. You know, yesterday I attended the, the Chinese workshop uh, and uh, one of the, the speaker mentioned, oh, this is very interesting, for the longest time, games and all these social media have kept our children stagnant at home. You think about it, huh? Group at home, you know, don't want to go out, you know, just on the PC playing or on the phone playing. Now, if this comes, they will go out, you know. This is a funny thing, right? They will really go out. You know, because they have to go out. If you want to catch more monsters and all that, they have to go out. But it comes with a lot of uh, risk. I mean, just offhand thing is already the physical harm because you're not paying attention, walking around, catching Pokemons on the street, you know, kind of thing. Uh, I mean, cars can hit you and all that thing. Um, but there's a lot of things involved. You know, so worldwide has a lot of things been happening. So we must stay alert to this uh, trend that, that may be coming. All right? I, have, I'm, I have no clue whether it will or will. I cannot make a statement, but I know Singapore is doing, the government ministry is doing its best to, to, to block it, uh, or at least looking around the world what's happening first. All right? So, as we have come to this point, you probably will recognize that every of the issues that we have faced, um, the moment your children or our children are on these devices, uh, all these issues will be magnified. The ease of act. Assess, okay, the ease of assess. And so I, I remember I told you just now, right? So why, uh, why, uh, 
Hey, EJ, why? Uh, what is going on in the minds of the children? Uh, knowing it is wrong, knowing the dangers, but still wanting to go and try. Okay? I have one word. Oh, no, one word. One word, four alphabets to tell you. Okay? It starts with the letter F. Oops, okay, no. Yeah. Hey, really, really. Okay? Do you know this word? FOMO. It's because of these four words. Uh, that's why the children knowing what is wrong, but yet still want to try. Anybody want to guess what does FOMO means? Very good. The fear of missing out. All right. They don't want to miss out. You know, so they succumb to peer pressure. Everybody play, I also play. I'm very noob at the game, but it's okay. I just want to be part of the group. I just play along. All right. I, I know doing this is it's not right. You know, uh, I shouldn't be uploading some of this content. You know, I shouldn't be taking some of these pictures. But everybody's doing it. You know, uh, being pestered for it. I just do it. The fear of missing out, the identity. All right. Um, so this is one very big reason. Okay. So all the more after you hear this, uh, are you doing okay so far? Your blood pressure okay? Uh? Okay. Anybody needs uh, those uh, meter to measure your BP? All right. Okay. Uh? Well, okay. Uh? All right. Because I, you know, every time I pack my talk, uh, uh, I sh always share the trend. So, and sometimes the trend get very shocking. Uh, and some of us, the, the breathing gets a bit heavier. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, but I want to highlight is this: despite the challenges, don't be dis discouraged. You know, uh, it all the more emphasizes to us that parenting in this digital age is very important. Not just parenting, you know, uh, but good parenting is ever so important. Okay, uh, because this is the trend of the children and the teens that we are facing with. No longer are the children like, don't know anything about internet and computer. They know a lot of things. By the time they hit primary school, they know every single other thing. Uh, much more to say when they hit uh, the teenage uh, years. Okay, so, but I, I also don't want to be, you know, painting just the other aspect where, oh, it's all bad, you know, what can we do? But there are, there are some positive uses, all right? Uh, so I'm going to share with you very quickly, what are some benefits of screen time? Okay, today we're talking about screen time versus face time. There are some benefits of screen time, which you might also be actively using it already. Uh, number one, okay, uh, some of these media content, you know, the platforms can promote interactions, you know, learning, you know, and can facilitate family participation in, in, uh, uh, and, and learning from the young people. Okay, um, what I want to highlight from this is that parents, then you need to take charge of the device and the media content. Okay. There are a lot of parents who tell you, oh, my child watched this uh, Korean drama on the YouTube, on the iPad and whatever, and all those things. How? Uh, you know? And one of my advice is, apart from the limit, limiting, uh, don't watch this, don't watch that. Then I'm saying that, can't we just show the Korean drama using the TV and make it a, you know, like a, like doing a movie like that. Lah. Then we all watch together, then we all talk about it, you know? Why restrict it to just a personal device and, and watching it, okay? So the key is interaction. Not just allowing the device to interact with your child, but after that, do you interact with your child? Okay? Uh, there's no official uh, research statistics, uh, but I can roughly tell this number. For every one minute you allow the children to be on the device, uh, are there three minutes you would actively interact with them in real life? Okay? To make sense of whatever they are watching. Okay, or whatever they stumble across. Okay, so it's important. But it can promote interaction, Skype and all those things. Technology has its good purposes. And of course, uh, encourage creative uh, benefits such as art, modeling, music. Okay, there are tons of good apps out there, you know, that can uh, jam music. You know, recently I, 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 I was alerted to this app that can make rap one. No? Rap. Uh. Okay, so everybody, like if we have five of us, everybody say something, uh, then they will formulate it, become a rap. Quite cool, uh. I mean, quite fun, uh, you know. I mean, so there are some of these fun music apps, you know, you can actually use uh, entertainment, uh, educational uh, as well. Okay, but I, I hear in, I, I say this, uh, okay, <laughs> uh, many parents have always asked me this question Hey, so EJ, uh, uh, can you recommend us some uh, educational apps uh, uh, that are healthy for children? Okay, um, I always say this, you know, it's very easy to find it, okay, but the question is, do the children want to play it or not? Okay, because what they want to play are the mainstream one, right? You know, the wah, you know. So what well, we can introduce, you know, it's good to introduce from a young age some of these things uh, at, a, at a suitable amount of time. But also you recognize that come at age, they want to try the other ones, you know. Again, sometimes you may want to let them try, make sense of it, talk to them. Don't just leave it uh, to them to play. And more importantly, when they do all this, 
creative thing ah, join together, do as a family. If you would bake cakes together as a family, why wouldn't you do this together as a family? All right, it is all together possible. All right, if you say the screen very small, ah, don't worry lah. Ah, nowadays Apple, you know, all create such a very big Apple iPad Pro or whatever, all very very big big screens one. Okay, so we can all use together. And lastly, uh, we always or often tend to generalize games as problematic. Wow, terrible, this game. Wow, terrible. Let's make sweeping statements. You know, My challenge is, is there a way for us to better understand games, some of these mobile games, use it to foster relationships, develop skills, you know, psychomotor skills, and, and, and all this. Um, I, 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 I shared this before. I know of a parent uh, who used Angry Bird, uh, you know, Angry Bird, to teach geometry, anger, which anger get three star, you know. So teach uh, and then the psychomotor skill is also undergoing training, okay, because the finger and all that. Uh, but having said that, this is the benefits, but don't just swing everything there. Our children still need to practice how to pen and paper write, uh, okay. Don't just be writing on a digital device and the handwriting all totally lost. Okay, uh, but there are some good skills and opportunities um, uh, that we can develop. And I recognize when our children play a game, they get frustrated, right? Angry. Use it as an opportunity, teachable moment to talk to them about patience, self-control. Don't fight fire with fire. You get what I mean? Many times they flare up. We also flare up. Whoa! Then fire and fire... Bigger fire, lah, that's all I can say. Okay? So sometimes we need to calm ourselves down, all right? And then hey, wait for a, a, a good moment. Talk to them, teach them about patience, all right? Or even kindness as well. Okay? So balance. How do we find balance between screen time and face time? All right? I'm going to show you a little video that I found online uh, again and uh, about technology. Um, and really, we need to balance, lah, huh? We need to balance. Uh, there are certain things in life that technology cannot uh, replace. Uh, right? okay. uh, so before I talk on the tips, you know, I know that some of us are looking for further resources. Uh, today, uh, in your goodie bag, there are some very good resources. Okay? Uh, there are some um, apps you can download. For example, this is not a newbie uh, that was developed by Touch and with our corporate partner, Singtel. All right, uh, very good inform information. Okay? Um, then there's a hard copy book in your goodie bag. All right? That was developed by the Media Literacy Council. Uh, so it's called Click Click. I find this very useful for young parents, um, uh, bring out young children, all right, because it teaches you what is your roles that you play, you know, like a linesman, you know, uh, like a coach, you know, what, what do you do, okay, so on various issues. All right, so this will be he helpful for you, and if you want the soft copy, you can also download from the Media Literacy Council uh, website as well. They have the PDF version, then you can share with your friends and all that. Huh? So, um, I, I, I want to spend the remaining time to talk about tips and handles, um, but I always tell myself I cannot talk about tips and handles if I don't touch on help us to better understand our parenting styles and our technique. Okay? Seated among here, all of you are parenting experts. In fact, I'm the most, I'm the youngest one. Huh? Ten months, I have so much to learn from all of you. But I've grown to understand in my work with, works with parents that hey, fundamentally, a lot of us have some natural styles. Okay? And I, I want to share with you, Broad, uh, I say the broad picture first, uh, the big picture first. Two, two styles. Uh, number one, uh, the regulated mediation style. Okay? So basically, you're like a, a rule setter. Uh. You set a lot of rules, you know. Uh, okay, this one cannot do, this one cannot. So a bit like a lawmaker in the house. Uh. So, and you set, usually it's time limitations, prohibitions, and all that. The second kind of style, the broad style, is what we call active mediation. Okay? You actually bother to explain to your children okay, about all these online media contents and, and all that. And, uh, but of course, you are able to do that on the assumption you know about 
the technologies and the uh, all these uh, Instagrams and all these devices, huh? all right, so, uh, and you help them interpret it. Wow, so you're actually like a facilitator, you're like a teacher. Okay, so that's good, okay? but often seen as very instructive. Lah, huh? Okay, so now, okay, the next slide huh, is where I plan to confuse all of you. Huh? That's where research comes in. Huh? Uh, back in 2008, there was a research paper done up using this broad framework of parenting style, uh, particularly in the area of uh, privacy and uh, self-disclosure online. Right? Uh, so they said that, the, the, the researchers actually said that, you no know, active and regulated, the broad two styles that we mentioned, all right, some of us are stronger in it, so high. Some of us are weaker at it, so it's low. All right? So for regulated, you have high and low. Active, you have high and low. Now, put all of them together, you have these four squares here, the four qua well, quadrant, if I may put it. Um, and I'm going to run through them one by one. Okay? For, there are some parents who belong to this category. They are low on both. Okay? Low on the active, low on the regulated. So they are called the laser flare category. Uh, uh, and so basically the approach is this. You can do whatever you want. I'm uh, going to do whatever, any, anything you want. Okay? Uh, uh, you need help, then you come to me. Got problem, then you come to me. Okay, this approach. Uh, okay, this approach has its concern. Because if one day, you use, you, if you are using this approach, one day your child come to you. Mommy and daddy, I got problem. I think the problem might be quite big already. Okay, and I, I jokingly, I always say, sometimes when they come to this stage, uh, the problem of often accompanying is the pol police car or the ambulance uh, coming. <laughs> yeah, there are some terrible dangers that might be along. Because we have allowed them, we, we, are, we are letting them learn in a, in a very too open an environment. Do anything you want, do anything you want. Okay, got problem, then come to me. A right, very laser flare approach. Uh, the second one, restrictive. Restrictive measure, which means you are low on the active, very high on the regulatory, so you often find yourself saying things like this, this green box that you see here. Ah, okay, no, 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 no. No game, no game. No internet on the weekday. Okay, finish your e-learning e submission. Okay, stop, no more playing. Ah. No Instagram until you are 16 years old. Huh? My friend Peter from the other class, 13 years old, got Instagram already. Ah, I cannot. Ah. Okay, ah, we can only go online for 15 minutes a day. You want to play that game, right? Only can play five minutes. Okay, but, no but, only five minutes. What I say counts, all right? Everything is no. But mommy, five minutes a day, daddy, five minutes a day, lock in, only can buy bread, buy water, come out already. <laughs> Cannot do anything else. Wow, go in, say hello only. That's it already. Uh, no, don't argue, okay? Be a good boy, be a good girl. All right, only 15 minutes a day or five minutes a day, all right? Uh, you, so most of the time, you find yourself saying a lot of no, all right? Even when you say yes, uh, it's yes to a no, all right? That's why I, 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 I find it from a lot of parents. Uh, huh? So that's restrictive for you. And uh, there's a third group, which is uh, um, promotive. High in the active, uh, low in the regulatory. Okay? So this approach often is, uh, you know, hey, you know, like very friend-friend kind, very buddy system. And, hey, come tell me what's happening, you know, uh, what's happening in your life. Tell me about this game. Oh, I see you so enthusiastic. Uh. Can you tell me a little bit more? Oh, you're so putting, uh, you're being bullied. Uh. Oh, okay, come, 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 you know, you should do this, you know, step one, step two, step three. Okay, very promotive, very friend-buddy kind of approach. Okay. The fourth one, the last one, is what we call selective. Right? Selective means high on both. Uh. It don't misinterpret. Uh. High on both doesn't mean you're high strung uh. okay. or, or panic mode. Uh. No, no, no. All right. It basically means that you set the rules, but you explain the rules. Okay. Remember the law making, the regulatory, you set the rules. But active means you explain, you bother to explain. Ah, you know, let's talk about this thing, you know, uh, when you go watch, watch out what you do, you know, ah, you must stop surfing, you must stop going online by 10 p.m., you know, we must all get off the internet by 10 o'clock. The, the screen, ah, not good, you know, watch too long, you know, I read a research paper, ah, you know, this blue thing from the screen, ah, what well, will affect your brain and all that, you know, if you don't have seven hours of sleep every day, ah, you know, the research paper says that, you know, in the long run, ah, you might get dementia in the future, you know, da 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 da, -da. well, you quote research paper, like, everything come out already. Ah, wow, okay. So, so um, you see, the interesting part is, I brought this, um, this matrix, uh, I call it matrix, uh, and I showed it to the teenagers. I said, okay, here Mr. Chong share first. Then you tell me uh, which category your parents are in. Okay? Uh, so you want to make a guess or not? Singapore parents, typical Singapore parents, uh, uh, I show back the, the, the four colors on. Uh, uh, which most of us, where do we end up in? Or our natural are uh, natural. Okay? Which color? Restrictive, uh, 
Okay, most of us are restricted. And there's nothing wrong. Uh, okay, please don't say, oh, restricted, uh, die, wrong, you know, must. Okay, uh, no, there's nothing wrong. Okay, um, no, but I find that the challenge for most of us is that we may start with restrictive, which is okay. But as our child grows older, we didn't change. We are still restrictive. When they hit secondary, we are still being very restrictive. Hit JC, university or tertiary, still very restrictive. Oh, I cannot. That's where you find that more fires and sparks are happening. Huh? Okay? So uh, what we actually uh, recommend is that you know, um, at a very young age, okay, if your kids are still like toddlers and uh, really in the preschool, kindergarten kind, right, you should fall into restrictive. Okay? Gradually, as they move to primary school, you should be looking towards being selective. Okay? Because you set the rules, right? they will start challenging your authority. Uh, why cannot? Okay? You don't want to brush them off. Use the opportunity to tell them the reason. As they grow older, secondary school, moving on to tertiary, uh, they want their freedom. Okay? We can set the rules, some basic rules, all right? but uh, sometimes they function by the mode, they want to just test it out. Okay? And there's a place for that. All right, let them experience certain things. Okay, but that's of course that there's ambigu amb ambiguity there, huh? where how much to let them test, you know, wow, but you know, I, I heartache, you know, wow, let them try. Later they feel exam how wow, and all that. Okay. Trust me, sometimes teenagers they have to learn the hard way. You cannot shield them forever. Okay. So selective and promotive like, you should move, huh? Okay. Yeah. So the, the teenagers tell me, ah, selective, selective, you know, the high on both one. Huh? Yeah, yeah, my, my, my parents, yeah. Uh, Mr. Chong is not called selective, it's called loso. Yeah. Right. Very long winded. But yeah, that is good, you know. Uh, I always say that it's good, you know. Uh, your parents, parents give you the right to be long winded, okay? Um, so uh, what can we do? All right, what are some basic tips that I want to give to you? All right. Firstly, I think we cannot run away from this, which is having conversations with our children. I put it as a very simple statement called talking to your children regularly. All right. I think a Reflection for us is, do we talk to our children regularly? Okay, give some thought to that. Huh? Do we talk to our children regularly? There's a difference between talking to our children or talking with our children or you talking to your children. Okay, okay that's, a, that's a, a, a difference, all right? But when I say this, I think I want to frame it in light that, you know, it should be in along the line where it's an open conversation. Okay, so they can share. You see, children, when they come back home, especially the primary school kids, you know, come back home, wow, a lot of exciting things to share, you know. Uh, wow, this and that, that what's happening in my life, my friend this, you know, somebody this, somebody sabo me or whatever, you know, they want to talk, okay. Let them share their experience, okay. I know the parenting urge is that the moment they say something that irks you a little bit, uh, then you want to jump in, you know. Wow, actually in your mind, you formulated the 10 steps to overcome, don't know what, don't know what. Uh. You want to jump in and say, you know, actually you should do this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know. You, you have to... Restrain a little bit. La. Let them share first, you know, then you process. Okay? Because I have encountered countless situations where many of these children tell me, say, Oh, I ask them, Do you talk to your parents? Do you talk with your parents? I say, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do the talking. Yeah, got talk. They, they talk. Lor. I listen. You know? And I say, Have you ever tried? I say, Yeah, I tried for two, three minutes. After that, overpowered. Okay, so they keep quiet. They zip. That's why they love to talk to their friends. You realize? Because the friends will listen. The friends will, wow. although the advice given can be, I mean, okay, controversial, certain things, uh, but they love to talk to people who will listen. All right? So HT, HT is very important with your children. I know time is challenging. We are all so busy, but uh, it's a sacrifice that we often have to make whenever we chose the parenting journey, okay? Uh, to give our children the time, all right? Talk to them. And uh, so very, you need to be very active. If I will add another word, it's called deliberate or intentional engagement. Uh, is there a place where things like that, this, this picture can happen at home? Finding out, you know, playing together, some of these things. Uh, getting your children to teach you about social media or games itself. All right? They may laugh at you, but it's okay. You know, that's fun. That's the fun of it. So engage technology. Give it a try. Okay? So just now, very beginning, uh, we show you all the... The, the platforms, uh, you know, like this handout, right? All the platforms that we have. Uh, and if one of it strikes you, uh, you know, that, hey, you know, I hear my, hear my children talking about it and uh, I'm a bit clueless, why don't you give it a try? You know? And then from there, kickstart conversations with your children. 
And uh, really, uh, I encourage in part of engagement, uh, this is usually for like maybe secondary school, all right? Uh, or, okay, just a show of hands. How many of you, you have family WhatsApp chat groups? Oh, very good, huh? Okay, please, please, please keep it lively. Huh? Lively, yeah? You find interesting quotes, selfie, whatever, video, please share, you know. Keep it. Don't always be instructional in the chat group. Huh? Where are you? Come back now. Or worse, or worse still, I, I've seen some parents like, come down for dinner now. Because a uh, two-story, you know. <laughs> well, dinner also must text, come down now, you know. <sighs> okay. Uh, uh, well, there are times for that, you know. But if the, the whole chat group is all about passing instruction, uh, you'll find that your children are very not responsive. Uh. The only response they will give is K. K. The O also don't want to type. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So keep it lively. All right. Now, what you learn, you know, and ask things. All right. So, so it's really okay. Keep it fun. All right. Secondly, all right. Set good and appropriate. I would say age appropriate guidelines. All right. And rules. What your children can and cannot do, or should or should not do on the internet, online. I would like to say that some of these rules do parallel with the real rules, the reality situations you give them. Examples like stranger, danger, some of these things. It, it is still uh, a remain. So it doesn't change just because the platform uh, has changed. Right? Uh, and of course, I want to share some, I mean, in my talk, I always share both the technical, the, 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 the hardware, software, and also the hardware, uh, the H-E-A-R-T. Uh. Um, so some good recommendations for mobile phones, because this is a session we talk about FaceTime, screen time. Uh. So how do we help make some limitations on the screen time, all right, or the way they use it. Uh. Um, I, a lot of parents always ask me, you know, wow, EJ, you know, touch community, uh, you know, or you work with like, wow, the government ministry and all that. Uh. Can you advise the government uh, or uh, touch also can come up with this, uh, you know, devise a special software, uh, app, uh, you can download on the handphone. Uh, uh, so I put on my handphone, put on my children's handphone, uh, then I press one button on my phone, I can see exactly what my child's phone is doing. What WhatsApp is saying, la, you know, what the Snapchat they're using, la, you know. And then uh, best, uh, if you get any one special feature, uh, you, I press one button on my phone, uh, uh, the phone will switch off. And then they will come for, they will come for dinner. Wow. I said, <laughs> I mean, I, I was quite pressured to give an answer. <laughs> but I, I said that, you know, if money is not a consideration, and those of us in the IT industry, you will know that it's, it's possible. It is entirely possible, this kind of tracking, monitoring, hacking software even. But the question is, are you sure you really want to do it or not? Because trust relationship is really at stake here. You know, uh, do we want to go to such an extent uh, of things? You know, but uh, so so let's let's not go that route. But I know that there are some basic monitoring. Maybe we would like it, especially when our child just started using the smartphone. You know, at an early age, you do want to do some basic monitoring. So. Um, um, some good guidelines for you. Before even buying the smartphone, think again. What is the right phone uh, that you want to get? Must it always be a smartphone? Okay. Although just now, beginning, we mentioned the 2G going to be in Canada already. Uh, soon, it's all going to be smartphone. Uh, then the consideration is, even when you get a smartphone, is it a prepaid plan, postpaid plan? You know, um, How do you secure the Wi-Fi at home? You know, Is it just by password? Or you have the router that especially has a time-based uh, settings kind? Okay. Technologically, uh, technologically wise, there are many good settings that can assist us in this parenting uh, journey. Okay, and of course, uh, uh, the broad statement I always say is: uh, set the boundaries, right? But after set the boundaries, uh, we must inspect the boundaries. Okay, uh, after ten years working with parents, I find that we are all very good at setting rules. This one cannot do. This one cannot do. This one cannot do. You know, then we don't inspect one. No? Okay, when you don't inspect, your children will call you bluff. They say, ah, mommy and daddy sell this. Uh, they never check one. Uh. Okay, so if you set some rules, you must check on it. Right? So for example, check on the mobile phone bills. Right? Uh, are there any special extra value added service they downloaded along the way? Right? Uh, two years ago when I did the Parenting Congress talk, uh, after the session, you know, um, I think it was tea break or something, one of the parents ran up to me, you know, show me a handphone bill, the, 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 this kind of bill. Uh, I think close to a few thousand dollars, you know. Okay? few thousand dollars because the child has been using the, the, the tablets and all that to download all these in-app purchases. Right? And goes unnoticed, this goes unnoticed, like nobody knows because sometimes 99 cents, 2 99 very small, but all these small, small amounts add up, you know. Uh, it's very shocking. And the scary thing is all these things you only know at the end of the month. 
So by then, I mean, no choice already, right? You only have to pay back, you know, and, and all that. Uh, so, um, you know, they are very good. Uh, all these, uh, the telcos have come up with all these utilities, uh, monitoring apps. So go and download uh, uh, it. Okay, now, so this is where the, the some of the recommendations come in. Uh. I Disclaimer, uh, I don't, I, I have no interest and fair share in any of these organizations that I put up, but you know, these are through some research we have found out that, hey, not bad, you know, so we let you uh, be informed about it. Uh, if you want to try, you can go and purchase or download it. Now, for mobile filtering and all that, uh, um, hardly there are any free services, okay? If it's free, it is because after you download already, they ask you to pay for the different elements. Okay, so uh, uh, so just be mindful. Uh. Uh, so some I recommend will be this like Mobi CIP, all right. So parental controls for phones, tablets, and computers. Quite comprehensive, lah. Huh? So it covers if you can see the very small words there: uh, iOS, Android, Windows, Chromebook, Mac, blah blah blah, and every single thing uh, that is out there. Uh, it's, it's it's really very comprehensive. Okay. Um, the second one to share with you: uh, screen times, right? So if you download it uh, on you and your child's phone, all right, you can see this exact screen. You know, you can monitor how much time they're using. You know, you can set limitations on the apps that they download, um, and and so forth and so on. And then the third one that I do recommend is uh, our pact. Okay, um, so this one is more of like coming up with an agreement with our children. Okay, so mobile guidance for your family. So it has all these things like that. Okay, internet blocking, application blocking. Um, you know. Um, using it as opportunity to engage in conversations with our children, right? Now, um, if you notice by now, these are all technical things. So sometimes it helps if uh, one of the spouse, you know, uh, is a bit more tech savvy, lah. So you need to probably dive in and do a little bit of research first um, before you uh, launch it with you and your child's phone. Now, uh, like I said, this is very good. These are very good for before you give the phone to your children set it in place first and whenever you set all this ah uh, parents hear me ah uh, please tell your children about it don't secret secret okay at night when they're sleeping you tiptoe into the room take their phone you know and then you think you know their password actually you don't know their password you know then you try to hack and whatever you know they install them the next morning they wake up Ta -da! you know doesn't work that way okay again trust relationship is at stake uh. make it very open uh, again, I say this, that uh, this is pretty good for, let's say, lower age when you want to start them out on a phone. By the time they hit secondary and all that, you, 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 you think, la, you, you just think, will they willingly give you back the phone to install some of this? It is highly unlikely. Okay, so when it comes to secondary school, it's a whole different uh, ball game. All right? A lot of time it is based on really trust, the way they uh, use it. But for a start, because we have some younger families here that are starting out, all right, this is pretty good. Um, so good guide, uh, good softwares to recommend. Uh, thirdly, adding on to point two, uh, would be using device in the open area boundaries, so you can monitor, you can observe. Okay, uh, this is not my house. Uh. This one is a randomly downloaded floor plan. Uh, but what I'm trying to tell you is that boundaries is important at home. Okay, do we set boundaries such as this in the bedroom, living room, dining room? Bedroom, no handphone, no computers, no PCs. Right, because it's a place for resting, not entertainment. Dining area is for makan, family time, not for gaming, not for emailing, whatever. So no devices there as well. Ah, living room, entertainment, fun, games. That's where we play. That's where we play together. Ah, so the key thing at living room to emphasize is together. Even though sometimes there are some messages coming in, but we don't get so overly absorbed into it, watch TV together, play games together, and all those things, all right? So important to have some of these boundaries uh, in place. Your children will definitely test the boundary, okay? That's one thing I will tell you. The second thing is, you will be tested on these boundaries, okay? Because many times, guess who is the one that will flout the boundaries? <laughs> Us, right? Because we are the ones often just taking the phone, taking the tablet, walking around in the room, you know, walking everywhere, and we tend to uh, flout uh, the rules. Okay, um, I'm saying this barring, of course, any form of emergency that is work-related because of the nature of your work uh, as well. If you do have those emergency, it has to be communicated first beforehand. Right. Um, so 
I, I share with you a little, uh, I'm not sure, any, any one of you here, you have house rules at home when it comes to gadget, technology? Go on, uh, have, uh, all right? Try to have, uh, it, it is very good. Even if it's three rules, four rules, five rules, you should have something. Uh, this house rule came from a parent who attended two years ago the Parenting Congress. So when she went home, she actually set 10 house rules for gadget uh, use. I, I thought it was so impressive, you know. Uh, and the reason why she has to has 10 uh, is because she has six children. Oh, I was like, wow, okay. Uh, double what the government has requested. Uh. <laughs> but very, very interesting, you know. And she said she has 10 because all different age groups, you know, so must have a bit more directive and specific ones. So things like no watching TV, on uh, playing games, or very strict, you know. But because there's six kids, all right. Even very specific, what I learned from her is that must be very specific, you know. No gadget during meal time. No gadget in the toilet. So often we are guilty of that. Uh. You know, I, I remember one parent talking to me recently, uh, I mean a couple of months ago, the parent told me, say, Oh my daughter, uh, my daughter go into the toilet uh, uh, one, uh, one, one, one and a half hour. Bathing one and a half hour. Okay. So I always I always joke, uh, you know, I say, huh, bathe one and a half hour, how you bathe? Uh, bathe and then the skin also come out already. You know? But because the first hour is spent watching Korean drama. One episode just nice, 45 minutes, one hour. Then after they finish, already, okay, go bathing. Wow. So no wonder they have to, uh, some of our households have to come up with some of these rules. Uh -huh. um, another reference you may want to consider, all right, parent child um, tech commandment. That's how this parent phrase it. Um, one, two, three, four, five. All right. I love number five. All right. Devices are not entitlement, it's a privilege and can be taken away. All right. Such a good statement, right? Okay. And, uh, when I got to know this parent, I was told that this rule number five was given by the child himself. By the child himself. How this parent did it was, uh, the family has five people, father, mother, three kids. So they got in a family meeting and said that everybody give one rule. So there's ownership. So often we are the ones that craft out the rule, right? And then the children will look at us, not fair. What rule you craft one? I'm uh, not involved in it. You know. So now we got them involved. All right? And that's important. So they are the ones that list down things like consequences and all. So there's a you know, communal uh, agreement on some of these things. So you can try it. Huh? Okay, but I know you all got handouts. Huh? Do you have this slide in your handouts? Okay, please do not, please do not after today go back, photocopy this slide very big and then plaster in your home living room. Huh? Okay, cannot, cannot, all right, not fair. Huh? You must have proper discussion with your children. And this is where I bring you to my handouts, all right. I think my handouts, I've, I've, um, I have, yeah, on the last few pages of the handouts, you have this thing like parent-child agreement, activity, you know, uh, and some food for thought questions, you know. Uh, these are very good things that um, you can do at home with your children, you know. Uh, I always say that, yes, it's good to have the parent-child agreement on the phone, on the device. But before that, uh, actually, you should do the food for thought question first. Because then you and your spouse will know what is your stand on certain things. Okay? Important, uh, all common ground first. Then we work with the children. Right? So husband and wife must be as one. Alright, and the last thing, uh, I can't emphasize this ever more enough. Uh, FaceTime versus screen time. Parents, you must be good role models. We cannot be telling our kids, hey, don't use so much handphone, don't be holding the handphone everywhere you go, but we are the ones holding it everywhere we go. All right? So it's very important, we must set good examples. And back to the house rule, uh, my question, house rule is for who? You, you all say one, uh? no, I say, okay, the children, you all here, yeah, okay. Uh, right? So everyone must abide by the rules. And so if we are the ones that flout the rules, should we follow the consequence? Okay, you all say one, huh? I never say one. <laughs> but that, that's, that's, it must be fair. Because you often hear your children cry out, not fair, not fair, not fair. This will be fair. All right? Because everyone follows by it. And it gives us an opportunity to display good uh, uh, role modelship, if I may call it, uh, to our children. So coming to the end of my, my, my session here, before we take a break and then we come back for the uh, Q&A panel discussion time, I find that, you know, uh, as I venture more and more into this area of parenting, you know, on this technology and stuff, I often take a step back and ask myself, hey, at the end of the day, is it always about just 
change the technology, control the technology, you know, uh, uh, do more education about the technology and all those things. I, I find it's not so. Um, because technology will keep evolving. Okay? Uh, but there are some basic fundamental parenting principles that will never change. Okay? Uh, and things like open communications, building strong parent-child relationship. And these has to be built over time okay, uh, with our children. Okay, so it's important. Strengthen your relationship with your children. I always tell parents, say, hey, if you tell me a presenting issue with your kid okay, and you want to intervene, I will often ask you back, how is your relationship with your child? Okay, if you have no relationship with your child, uh, like what this next slide will tell you, uh, okay, you try to clamp in more rules, uh, it's not going to work. One. Right, rules without rules with relationship leads to a response. Rules without relationship is going to lead to a rebellion. Really, you imagine? No relationship. We are not even on talking terms. We are very stressed. You know, ah, claiming more rules. Cannot do this. Cannot do that. You know, uh, World War Three, Four, Five, Six, Seven, Eight, Nine, Ten is going to come out. Right? Seriously. Okay. And uh, if I give you one more little nugget, is this? Um, apart from telling the kid what they cannot do. Why not try telling the kid what they can do? Is there an alternative we provide for them? Because far too often they have been hearing, and this is what I hear from the children. My mommy and daddy always tell me, can I not do this, can I do this? But then when I tell them, ask them, what can I do? They have no answer for me. Okay? Because the fundamentals behind that question is, it reveals sometimes that we have no time. Because often we feel like telling them, let's go out, let's do something together. But then we are very... Attention inside our heart. But I'm busy with this, I'm busy with that. Weekends come, I have to rush my work and all these things, you know. But we have to make time for our children. So even though we are talking a lot about screen time for children today, I would throw the ball back into the parents' court again. There are times we need to manage ourselves, you know, our own boundaries as well. Okay, uh, I will end with this video. I, some of you have seen it on Facebook, and social media and all that. But uh, there was this video that was floating around which I thought was very apt. You know, they, they posed a question. If you could have dinner with anyone, living or dead, in the world, anyone, all right, uh, your grandest dream, who would you choose? All right, so let's take a look at this video and see what are the responses from the parents. Let's make time for the people that matters to us most. You know, uh, as we close this session, we talk about face time versus screen time. All right, if I may propose to you the solution, the solution is found in that statement, it's the common factor for these four words that we see, face time versus screen time. It is time with our children. Make time for the people that matters to us most, all right? And always recognize that, you know, uh, I know there are many challenges in parenting, all right, from young to the older stage, uh, but recognize that there are many people who can help us, all right? It takes a village to raise a child. This African proverb it still remains, all right? The fact that you are here at this parenting congress yesterday, today to learn is a very good start, 
all right? Continue to strengthen the community you live in, get help from people, be open in schools, in your own communities, because it takes a village to raise a child. Yesterday, I learned a new statement even. As they grow older, it takes a village to influence a child. Not just raising a child, but influencing a child, all right? So, uh, uh, this last picture to show with you, what else can we do? After you learn so much in the Parenting Congress, right, you must engage, lah. <laughs> the greatest uh, teaching, you know, if you don't apply what you've learned, you know, it is just wasted in a sense. So go back, you know, if there are some minor things we need to adjust, adjust. If it's the house rule, learn to discuss with your children and put it in place. All right. So some, uh, you know, if you need further help, of course, this is where I work. All right. Touch uh, community. We have a dedicated cyber wellness hotline. So any cyber related matters, you can call our youth counselors. And uh, of course, uh, if you are very uh, IT, you know, online person, you like to go Facebook, Instagram, we have all these links for you. It's all in your handouts. I will not uh, reiterate further. Uh, last but not least, if not, all right, I would like to say a big TYVM to everyone. You know what is TYVM? Thank you very much. The greatest applause goes to all of you parents and the children who have sat through this uh, time together with me. All right, I pass the time back to Jamie. Thank you very much, Mr. Chong. Let's give him another big round of applause. Thank you.